Hey everyone, Mike Craighauser, field agronomist covering Northwest North Central Kansas. I just want to spend a few minutes talking with corn rootworm best management practices that we can implement on some of our farms going forward. This is a study down in that I did in 2016 that what we did is we actually had all these different locations that we did. So it covers a pretty wide geography. And you can see that July 18th is, is where I put the traps out and I leave them there for seven days. So July 18th would have been the day that I would have I've gotten those. So they were actually out on July 11th. So again, right around that middle of July is when I put them out. And you can see um, really for the most part, other than um, the two lines that are high over in the 80, that was further down south in my territory, which beetle emergence is quicker down there than it is up towards the interstate, north of the interstate. But you can see um, a lot of stuff going on there as far as when the beetles are coming, spikes all over the place, um, dips, different things that are happening. But then again, towards September, middle of September, we start to see our numbers get down low enough to where we, you know, we're not catching too many beetles, maybe one to two to three per plant or per trap, which if we hit 50 per trap, you know, that is the threshold to start spraying. Um, anything between 50 and 21 is kind of a moderate, um, 21 and less or 20 and less would be low. So when you look at that, be thinking about that, but just look at that time frame. It's, it's two months that we have beetles emerging. So just looking at a couple other two particular plots that we did here um, going forward. So we treated the top left-hand one with Lord's band. Now you see a big spike there on the July 18th. Those were probably the ones that were pupating out before we got the Lord's band on, uh, chemigated through the pivot. Uh, we also beetle bombed this during tasseling stage, which helped keep those populations low. You see, we were able to maintain that uh, right around 40. So we're right under threshold um, while we took those measures. And then the following substance year, um, we had very low numbers going forward. So yeah, it was a two treatment pass as we went through. But as you can see, just from the July 18th, if we had taken no pressure or uh, no uh, measures to clean this up, uh, this, this would have been a train wreck. It would have been pretty bad. Uh, these fields got hailed on uh, several different times, uh, a couple of years in a row. Uh, so we didn't take a lot of measures to clean up beetles because of the, the yield condition and, and those type of things. Now, the bottom graph uh, was a circle right next to it. The, uh, the grower, we didn't think it was really all that bad. He didn't feel like he wanted to spend the money, so we didn't. Uh, but we did beetle bomb this one during tasseling stage two. So you can see quite a bit of difference of what the, the Lord's band plus beetle bomb with just the beetle bomb did in a very, very heavy root one pressure environment. Thinking about all the stuff that's available for us as far as corn rootworm treatments or insecticide treatments, uh, there is a, a long list of stuff, but when you really start looking at the mode of actions in there, um, there's a lot that we can and can't do with this. So you look at your pyrethroids, okay? Um, we've already documented some, some known resistance of those. So if you go in and start taking some of those off, you know, your list dwindles down very, very quickly, okay? When you start looking at organophosphates, Okay, we know there's there's some stuff there that we've seen some resistance studies and, and things going on there that we don't like. So, you know, what do we do with organophosphates? Well, they're not 100%. So if you scratch those off the list, now you're down to three products, which kind of gets a little bit scary um, when you're looking at how can we combat some really tough situations. So if you look at uh, carbamates, the 1As, um, we've kind of known resistance for those since the 90s. So Again, not extremely effective on that. So if you cut all that out, you're basically down to one product. That product is Stuart um, to give you another mode of action. A lot of your pyrethroids, organophosphates, your bifenthrins, those type of things, um, they're all used in furrow. Um, some of them can be used over the top, but you know, if we start laying a lot of bifenthrins over and over and over again, you, we know that can lead to resistance going forward. So coming all down to that, you know, our the best just got better, okay? We wanna keep the best. We wanna keep our yield advantage. Remember that we stacked Herculex-1 and Herculex rootworm into a molecular stack called DP4114, which would be chrome. It's an easier insertion point. Uh, it opens up a lot of our germplasm, especially the high yield germplasm. And that's why we're seeing just off this last year, 7.7 .7 bushel increase across the nation over smart stack technology just in 2020 harvest. We wanna keep 
the best agronomics. So the yield, the stability, everything that we have in there, the disease packages, all that stuff we want to keep. We're also going to keep our Lumiaza, our bionomaticide that we released a couple of years ago. You know, in heavy rootworm or heavy nematode pressure situation, sorry, it's all nine bushel advantage. And even the low nematode pressure, we saw 3.7 bushel advantage, 80 plus days of protection and can help us against a lot of those nematode pressures that we're seeing out there. If you don't think you have nematode pressure, we're actually doing a study this year and we're going to have over 130 samples brought in for corn nematodes that we'll be looking at, see what the pressure really is like across the geography. So stay tuned and, and we'll get you some of that information too. We also want to add more. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our enhanced CRW package to all Chrome products going forward. Just with this advantage, we're seeing a three bushel advantage. So you got 7.7, you got from three to nine bushel, you got another three bushel. That's a lot of yield that we're bringing to the table. So more yield potential, improved standability in those tough real form environments. Um, and it's all because of our enhanced protection. So like I was saying, if you look over on the left, left side of your screen there, we will be running uh, Lumiazo, which is our nematicide with Lumisure 1250, which will be our insecticide. So that is giving us more protection for rootworm, especially in the larval stage. Um, going forward, it, it'll just be a standard treatment that we will do on all Chrome products. So we're trying to bring the best, but the best just got better. 